We are pleased to welcome uh, State Senator Kevin O'Toole, served 22 years in the state legislature, nearly 30 in public office, and he has decided at an incredibly young age to, this, this is it. Because, well, what's up with you? You're a young man, you've, got all, you've done all these great things, more things to do, and? If somebody worked for General Motors for 30 years <laughs> and retired, they would have a party, give them a gold watch, and it's a great career. I've been 30 years at public service, loved every minute of it, but it's time to hang it up and move in a different direction. And I'm going in a different direction. I have a six-year uh, Port Authority term coming up. I want to teach a little bit. I have this law firm going on. I've got a wonderful wife and two kids that uh, keep me engaged. So I've got a pretty full schedule. You know, uh, by the way, Kevin and I are longtime friends, um, and we've known each other and have a lot of offline conversations about family more than anything else. Um, i got to ask you something. People who say, you're in politics, you're addicted to politics, you can't get out unless they throw you out. I did not have a choice, you know, as an extremely young man. I lost my seat in the state legislature. 1985. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why would you have that year right in your mind? Because that's when I started with John Kelly in 1985. It was a terrible year. We won. You lost. You cried. It was terrible. I, hold on. I what? beat him two years before. I know you did. You cried. He <laughs> cried. <laughs> yeah. But the truth is, I'm not sure if I had won, whether I would have had the guts to get out. Yeah. You did. Um, they say in the state senate it's easier to go out in a body bag than voluntarily <laughs> surrender yourself. And that's the reality. There are folks who are addicted to this world. That's, I, that's I've seen it point. happen. It has taken some of the very best public servants and sucked them in. They get defined by their titles, whether you're a senator or a congressman, governor. They introduce themselves with that. I never do. I'm Kevin. You're Steve. But there are folks, I'm senator, you know, so-and-so. And that is, to me, foolish. It's silly. It's politics, as your father taught me, is an illusion. You, you make the best of it, you do good things, but don't think for a moment that it's real. The senator, hold on. Senator O'Toole and your kids, I mean, I know your kids and how proud they are, your, your wife as well. People walk up to your restaurant, Senator O'Toole, that means nothing to you. No, say Kevin, absolutely. I don't ever introduce myself as a senator. I don't demand on the phone, get someone right. so on the phone. It's not who we are, Steve. At the core. So here's the question. Greatest accomplishment you feel in your work in the state legislature after two decades plus is? Just the basic constituent services, helping thousands of people uh, either get uh, power and electric, get them into a college, get them a job, uh, health services, basic things. And we had an individual who was denied health services and we got them a heart transplant. I mean, things like that you don't see, largely because of my staff. I've had the same campaign office district manager, Renee. I've had three chiefs of staff who have been phenomenal. That type of constituent service is what I'll miss. That's been the greatest credit that my office has given. Greatest frustration? The slowness, the partisanness of um, the gridlock. You know, years ago when I worked in the 80s as a staffer, there was this back and forth. Um, the John Kellys and the Joe Dorias would have these conversations. A Democrat or Republican? And that doesn't exist. The moment Chris Christie got elected, the Republicans were hopefully going to push some of his agendas. The Democrats, the majority, were trying to frustrate his agenda. And it's remarkable what he's done in two terms, Chris despite the fact that he's had Democrat roadblocks every step of the way. Why have you been so loyal to Chris Christie? I believe very much in him. I think he's probably the single best governor we have seen, poll numbers aside. He's bold. He's visionary. Uh, he did what he said he was going to do, which is a rarity in politics. In spite of all the setbacks, in spite of all the controversies, you believe he is one of the best governors we've ever had? By far. If nothing else, he's done pension reform, which will save us $30 billion and stabilize the pension system for 30 years. If he's done nothing else, he's a wild success. He's cut our unemployment in half. It was a 10 percent. It's now under five. He gets no credit for that. I mean, he has streamlined businesses. He has talked to CEOs who have been looking to leave New Jersey and said, stay here. Let me tell you why. The lesson you take from Bridgegate is? Um, listen, the, the lesson is you can't control all circumstances. You can't, even though you are the titular head of the state or of a party, you know, and you bear some responsibility, individuals are going to do stupid things. I've got 50 employees at my law firm. I can't tell you what one of them on a given day will say something stupid, send a stupid email or text or do a stupid directive. Ultimately, it's my name on the firm. I'll be responsible. Do I think he's responsible? Absolutely not. And I read the documents more so than anybody else. I served on a committee, saw documents that nobody else has seen, and he is not even remotely involved. I don't care what anybody says in the hype all the side. How much is politics personal for you, Kevin? Uh, and because we have known each other a long time and, and we do have a personal friendship, 
do you expect people to do certain things politically because of your personal friendship sometimes on the issues? I mean, or is it purely, hey, you believe or you don't believe on the issue, or how much of it's personal? Well, I mean, you, you grew up in the day when the handshake said, this is what we're going to do. We agree on a great public policy, maybe tinged with little politics, and it gets done. There are few in our, our business now that you can say you take that to the bank. Whether, I mean, Steve Sweeney, yes. Brian Stack, yes. You know, Steve Orho. There's a number of senators that I deal with and elected officials that it's Joe Crine, absolute man of his word. When you say this is, what, this is where we're going, we're going forward with it. Hmm. But by and large, most of the caucus in both parties, they are as transactional as they come. Well, here's the thing. Devil's advocate is the public says, well, wait a minute. That means you just have a side deal with somebody who's a friend of yours. You're, you're scratching his back or her back, and they're scratching each other. That's not the public's business. I didn't, say, I didn't say it was something for something. I'm saying we have an understanding we're going to move forward on a set public policy that makes sense. Now, once you establish that policy, it becomes unpopular, and these people will stand in the fire and say, no, we agree to this principle. We're going to move forward. There are others who will collapse in the face of a political avalanche and melt away. I can't do that because the pressure's too much. And one of the things I admire about Chris Christie, notwithstanding um, the public pressures, he stood up and did some really wild things. And the pension reform is one of them. Tax reform is another one. He's done some amazing things in the face of the most vicious national media that would have melted down the casual observer in politics. Don't tell me, because I know how moderate you are and I know how sensitive you are and how much empathy you have. Do not tell me you like Donald Trump. You're not going to tell me that. See, I don't, I've met him once. Do I like him? Here's the reality. You don't think Here's, he's good for the country. I'm set, I, 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 no, it's a set you, up question. You, but you could say that. I'm asking, do you think he's good for the country? I think we need to give him a chance. Unlike everyone else who has written him off a year ago, two years ago, he was elected by the people. Of the United States. I don't question that. Let him govern. They have criticized this man from the moment before he took office. They have micromanaged everything he's done. They've double standard what was under the Clinton you, regime. You think it's under different, a, Kevin? One thousand percent. One thousand percent. Listen, they don't give him. And has he made his own they, mistakes? They keep saying that. The media. The, the you go on MSNBC. There's 15 pollsters or 15 talking heads. He didn't do this right. Syria. He can't win for losing. Just give him a shot. He's our president. Let him govern. If he makes mistakes, he either learn and you can elect or not elect him. Three and a half years. But there are folks who have set up to kill this guy politically, um, you know, and they haven't given him a chance. You I don't think, think most he, have given him a chance. Government. You don't think that he creates a lot of his own sure stuff by being undisciplined, by constantly saying what's on his mind via Twitter or just an off the cuff comment? And I, you, just, you don't think he creates a lot of that? Absolutely does, Steve, but guess what? He's not anybody different than the people voted for in November. That's exactly who Doesn't they voted for. Doesn't he have to be for. better? By, uh, by whose standard? By whose standards? Kevin, you didn't do that. This is, a, a, and I didn't run for president. And by the way, if you are elected duly by the people of the United States, they trust your judgment. Now, mm. we're not going to agree on everything he does. Give him a chance. Stand or fall on what he thinks he's going to do. He's got some good folks around him. He'll learn. Mm. He'll Listen, he's not the Washington insider. He'll make mistakes. Mm. And let's see what happens. But, but you just, you're distrustful of the media. Even though you are writing, by the way, tell folks where people can find the column. You're writing a pretty provocative column. Where? Insider NJ. Dot com. Is that the new Max That is, Bizarro? Max Pizarro. I'm lucky. I volunteer every, every once in a while. I get inspired, and I, I jot a few notes down and send out some of my life experience, which I think is pretty cool. Well, uh, are you going to write a book? I'd like to. You want to say what you really think about the process? Absolutely. And, and what works, what doesn't work, and why we need to move forward? Hey. Yes. Do you think it's any better in Trenton, the gridlock that we see very often, than in Washington? I think Washington's probably worse. Because? Uh, it's just so polarized. It's been polarized. You know. It's been polarized since I've been watching D.C. It's just worse now. It's, again, it's scorched earth mentality. Um, the Republicans can never be right, but the Democrats, the Democrats can never be right. But right the Republicans aren't even the same party. Sorry for interrupting. No, David. you're right. It's Are just they really? It was two, three different parties going on. Listen, I think D.C. is just is ridiculously beyond broken, and Trump is the only person who can either remodify, recast both parties, or have the whole thing burned to the ground. Whoa, whoa. What does that mean, burn to the ground? It means you're going to have to, the, both parties are going to have to do, a, there's, a, there's a reset, there's a recast going on in D.C. Either they're going to work together to do health care reform, Democrats and Republicans, or this is going to be a stalemate for four years. Either they're going to do tax reform, infrastructure reform, working together, or this is going to be a gridlock for four years, and then you're going to have some extremists in both parties rise out in 2020 and try to take over D.C. and try to redo yeah, yeah, Kevin, after you say all these things. After the fact, some of us have known you to be someone who brings people together, you're a consensus builder. I'm not saying because you're a friend. It's a fact. You've got to be saying to myself, I can't leave right now. I can leave right now. 
percent. You have to know when to say when in this business, Steve. You can't stay forever. I think you lose your you, you, you think I, You think some of us should be ready to walk out? I think someone's interviewing for your job right now is my <laughs> guess. That's my guess. You think we I, should know when it is? Like absolutely. Global, great ball player, great broadcaster, when you great stay politician. Too long. Ryan Sandberg, what did he do? Stay, he, he left. He, right. he gave his money back because I couldn't perform. That's rare in this day and age. Wow. Right? So you respect that. 1,000%. I love this. I said to myself, 20 years max in Trenton. You and did. I'm thrilled. Loved it. I could have stayed another five, six, eight you know, That'd more be years. very effective. And I just think you have to turn it over and have folks come in that are younger, who have new ideas. And right. you got young kids, you can still be engaged and involved in their lives and do other things in a great law firm. Absolutely. Senator Kevin O'Toole, 22 years in the legislature, nearly 30 in public office. Thank you for everything you've done, Senator. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by Summit MD Anderson Cancer Center, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Valley National Bank, St. Peter's University, New Jersey Resources, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by the North Ward Center.